Blog Talk Radio. Warning, the following program may include profane language, controversial viewpoints, and perspectives on the true nature of reality so far removed from the status quo, they'll make your head spin like a top. Young children, corporate executives, and religious fundamentalists should turn away now. Good evening, fellow Earthlings. Welcome to Episode 2 of The Extraordinary Year, the online show that puts everyday people with questions about 2012 on the road to understanding. My name is Tim Bravo, and I want to express my gratitude to you tonight for joining with us. Um, Tonight should be an interesting show for listeners, because we're going to take a look at a, a number of murmurings in the 2012 underground. If they prove to be true, at least two major chess pieces will be moving forward for the good of all mankind in the near future. I'm talking about major reshaping of the global economy of this planet aimed at making poverty, lack, and inequality of any kind a thing of the past for everybody. And I'm talking about a program allegedly underway as I speak wherein our people and extraterrestrials work in cooperation to push disclosure of the ET presence ahead without the governments of the world, ostensibly because it's February 2012 and it's time to get the show on the road. Again, this has reportedly already begun. Uh, It's kind of heavy, it's kind of weird, but we're going to talk about it and and, uh, I'm going to explain to you guys why I think it actually might be happening. Um, You know, you got to keep your mind open. That's all I'm asking on this show. Just keep your mind open and listen to what people are saying. In a related story, the world of 2012 believers is losing one of their greatest voices, but only for a month. Yesterday, Steve Becko uh, voluntarily stepped aside from posting publicly for a month because of events related to the beginning of these very trips to other planets and beyond our solar system. That's what they're saying, and... um, and, you know, this Steve Becko is basically the source. He he kind of worked this thing up, and then uh, it got out of hand. But we're going to talk about that. Um, and I'm also going to try and get Steve on the show if I can. Um, you know, th- this is an individual who I have a great deal of respect for. Um, I have been paying attention to the writing. He does an immense amount of writing on a daily basis. And uh, this is a guy who is a member of Mensa in Canada. Um, he lives in Vancouver. And uh, he, he's a very bright individual who has put everything on the line to go all in and talk about these things and uh, and open himself to possibilities that have led him, you know, according to him, to some very interesting uh, friends. Anyway, um, we're going to talk about Steve, and uh, we're also going to talk about a guy by the name of Bill Brockbrader. Um, He goes by the alias of Bill Wood and claims to be a former Navy SEAL from Team 9 and has just done a third multi-hour interview with Project Camelot. Now, why has Project Camelot done their last three interviews with this guy? Uh, I can't wait to tell you because let's just say it has something to do with what's really coming our way over the course of this extraordinary year and why it's scaring the pants off the people who have been running this planet. We'll be talking about all this tonight and uh, we'll be taking listener questions and comments live. Um, So let's start at first here with this voyage to the stars thing. What is this all about? Well, how this started was uh, Steve does a uh, weekly radio show on Block Talk Radio, uh, the same platform you're listening to me on, Um, and he does it on Monday nights for an hour, I believe. And in this hour, um, if you take it at face value, what happens in this hour is the Archangel Michael will channel himself through a medium named Linda Dillon, and they do this live. And then she is apparently a gifted channeler because she uh, makes, you know, steps aside for a number of interesting and seemingly unique personalities, um, including 
captains of spaceships and such things as that. And I know it sounds crazy, people. I know it sounds crazy. But, you know, if you think that the Earth is around the Earth is around one star, we have just heard that almost every star that we can see has planets around it. And we can see a lot of stars, people. There are over a hundred billion stars in our galaxy. There are over a hundred billion galaxies in the universe that we know of. And when you think about all that space, and I believe, uh, oh, who was it that said, if you think about all that space and think that we're the only things in it, you have to imagine that's an incredible waste of space. I think it was Carl Sagan. And, uh, you know, he was no slouch when it came to space. So um, you got to think about the possibilities and uh, really take a look at the situation on Earth and really take a look at our history, what we can glean from what we've been lied to about. Um, you, you start to have to really open your mind to the possibilities and things. And that's what I'm asking you to do. Just bear with me, people. Just bear with me and open your minds, and then go check it out for yourselves, and then see what you think. You know, you know um, that's all I'm asking. Okay, so that's how that started, was uh, through uh, that angel show that he does on Monday nights. Apparently, he had a conversation with the captain of a ship by the name of Brenner. Not only is he captain of a ship called the Neptune, apparently, um, this individual, Brenner, is the president of the Intergalactic Council. And I know that sounds ridiculous when you say it out loud, but follow with me here. Anyway, so the plan was that they were going to pretty much publicly, well, surreptitiously come in, grab a set of Earthlings. It was supposed to be like 20, 25 when they had this discussion. And um, they were going to go up and they were going to, you know, take, video and bring it back and you know they're going to take them to all the planets and out beyond and show them other civilizations and show them how they live and then bring them back after 10 days with the evidence and force the disclosure issue that way that was the plan and so and then we started you know um hearing about you know how people were going to get on the list to go and it just got out of hand quickly, and apparently before it was all said and done, by the time Saturday rolled around and the pickups were supposed to begin, there was a list of like 300 people, and it was just ridiculous and stupid, and people were reportedly under surveillance. And so anyway, by all appearances, it didn't go off. Saturday came and Saturday went, and nobody got picked up. Or so we thought. Now this is where it gets interesting. And Steve Becco put himself out on the line. Before it happened, he said, if this doesn't go off, I will, you know, he was. He said, I will take full responsibility. And he pretty much has. Um, and I think he's doing it responsibly, considering um, the service that he actually provides. Um, I think he's doing the right thing. And we'll talk about that. Uh, but first, we need to talk about alleged reports back from the Neptune <laughs> apparently there are, there are actual alleged reports to be coming back from this mission and uh, a fellow by the name of John Lear who is a real guy and I know of him and you should know of him um, and if you don't go check out John Lear while you're listening to the show go Google him and uh, you'll find out some interesting stuff and uh, I I don't know if anybody has actually you know, tried to track him down on Earth to make sure he's actually out there in space. But uh, um, he's a real guy, and the writing that comes back looks like it could have been from him, and he I haven't heard anything from him saying he's not out there. Um, John Lear is the son of Lear, as in Lear Aviation. And uh, this would be the, the crown prince, as it were, to that whole Lear thing. And at, through the aeronautics connections in his father's company, you know, he saw a lot of things that, you know, back in the day when 
they weren't quite as they, they were just getting underway with their black ops thing, and they didn't quite have the secrecy thing, secrecy thing down well enough. Because you know, who would believe all the stuff that we now know is going on was going on? So, if you go to Steve Becko's site, which is 2012scenario.com, no, it's the2012scenario.com, or you can just go to stevebecko.com, and his last name is B-E-C-K-Beck-O-W, Becko, um, and it'll, it'll channel you right to the 2012 scenario. Just go read the stuff on what's been going on and do it with an open mind. And, and the reason I ask you this because, you know, one source, that's ridiculous. You know, oh, you're just reading this thing on a website. No, I'm not just reading this thing on a website. I'm reading this thing on a website by a guy who is, you know, really putting himself out there and has been consistently for a while. And his true purpose for doing it is the good of mankind because he's not the only guy saying a lot of these things. You're, we're getting independent confirmation from other sources. From And granted, yeah, they're on one, on one part they are further channel sources, and that's all sticky stuff, you know, because it could all be bullshit. But you kind of use your discernment and looking through this stuff to separate the wheat from the chaff. And when you find a lot of people who, you know, for all intents and purposes it would be impossible for them to collaborate consistently saying the same thing um, and and doing it without delivering doom and gloom and scary stuff, you know, then there's really nothing in it for them because they're just being beautiful <laughs> and, and delivering a beautiful message about what's coming our way. And uh, that's what it's all about. And the rubber's about to meet the road by all reports in a lot of different areas. And, uh, if, you know, if John Lear is out there, and then he's coming back, and he's reportedly not the only one. And if he's coming back, he's coming back with evidence, and we should know soon. And if not, when he pops up and it's bullshit, then I guess I'll deal with it then. And all I'm saying is I'd like to believe in it. I'd, I'm, I'm actually, I might sound like I'm all in believing it, but, you know, there's a part of me that's really skeptical, but, you know, I, do I think it's possible? Yes. Would I like it to be true? <laughs> you bet your ass I would. You bet your ass I would. And, uh, you know, it just fits in with a lot of other things that, that are going on on this planet. But you're not hearing about these things because you're locked in a prison called America where none of the news gets in. And if it does get in, it gets in with a glint, if you know what I mean, with a spin. So, you know, you got to dig for what's really going on on the, you know, the world scene. Because you're not going to get the information from the United Nations. You're not going to get it from CBC, you know, CBS or NBC. And definitely not going to get it from Fox News. So, you, you, you got to do the work yourselves. Okay, so Steve's taking a month off, right? Um, and this is his way of voluntarily disciplining himself for letting, I, I guess the way I read it is he's, you know, he he feels he mismanaged what, what happened with the run-up to what was supposed to happen. Hey, 617, I see you out there. Let's, uh... Let's talk about this. You're on the air. Hello? I'm on the air. Cool deal. Hey, Tim, it's Matt. Oh, right on. Hey, everybody, this is Hello. Matt Lawless, who, uh, unlike his esteemed roommate, Canada, does not have a nickname yet. Uh, you will have a yeah. nickname. Good deal. Okay, Good. so... So what do you think about all this craziness? Because I'm really glad that you called in. It's the perfect time. Have you been listening? Good. Dude. Yeah, I've been listening. It took me a minute because, honestly, I couldn't tear myself away from the hot tub. So. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I'm here now. <laughs> so you're going to have to bring me up to speed. But, however, I would like to bring you up to speed on one small matter. Kind of getting off topic, but I know you'll appreciate it. Um 
you being a musician, I, I'd like to point this out. Um, a buddy of mine named Phil Ross, he's a local musician, he had a bass guitar stolen. And I'd like to put it out there. If anyone's listening, it's a highly customized bass guitar. It's a five-string with one string missing. The middle string is missing. Um, it's got two uh, single-coil pickups turned sideways. Um, it's been stolen. I'd like to just put it out there. If anyone sees anything. What, what color is it? Um, it's black. It's black bass guitar. And I don't know. I, I, I don't mean to change subjects here or anything, but uh, I thought you'd be a musician, you know, you'd appreciate it. So. No, that's cool. I, and, and I actually, you know, I figure there are probably a couple people in Wichita, in the Wichita band scene that might actually be listening. And, uh, I guess keep your eyes out, Wichita. Um, yeah. Black keep bass, black spring, spring with a string in the middle missing. <laughs> you can't miss that. Right? And, it's highly and it's kind of bullshit that people, you know, I cannot believe that we're still doing stuff like that to each other. Yeah, well, Some people's children. Well nowadays, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I guess... You know, you got to feel sorry for someone who's going to stoop themselves that low. Oh, well. Anyway, I mean, bring me up to speed. Like, I missed uh, basically the first ten oh. minutes. Uh, you you missed on quite here. a bit. I, you missed quite a bit. We um, Our first main subject was about the uh, this voyage to the stars that was supposed to happen last Saturday that I told you guys about. Uh, you talked about the... Uh, the guys that were supposed to be picked up? Yeah, yeah. Well, you so, know, so. It, Saturday came and Saturday went, and it didn't look like it happened, which is what I was just talking about, except... Yeah, that's about after where I came fact, in. So. After the fact, it, it ended up looking like maybe it did, because there's actually two different reports back from a guy named John Lear, who's a real guy that I know of, um, and you, everybody should go check him out. John Lear. Lear and start. Yeah, exactly. He's the son of the guy who started that. And because of that, saw a lot of stuff back in the day, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, 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 and I think he lived. The mind of, you know, our skies as we know them, you know, and uh, the, 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 those are the people who... You know, I mean, take it from a layman like you or me, you know. You know, we're not up there every day. We don't know exactly what's going on. We don't see, you know, exactly what's happening in our immediate atmosphere, you know. We we, we don't know, you know, unless by, um, you know, I guess eyewitness here, you know, on Earth. You know, we don't know exactly what's going on. Even in our own atmosphere, we don't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Forget about beyond it, right? Or underneath right. the well, earth. Well, if you if you tune into the subtle clues, then yes, we do have clues. Well, we do have clues, and we have a lot of people talking about stuff that it all seems to be indicating that there are big things afoot right now, right now, and that's kind of why you know it's. I mean, there's just to get people up to speed with what's happened in the last week. Um, it's going to take the two hours because it's nuts. Um, yeah, right. Because of uh, yeah, now, I I was also telling people I don't know that John Lear is actually out in space, out beyond the solar system right now on a planet or on a on a ship called the Neptune, you know. But that's what he's that's what these reports say, and that's what was supposed to happen. You know, and reportedly what happened is the initial mission got so bloated with people and so ridiculous that it basically got you know, the kibosh, and they just went with picking up a few people, and then they're going to, you know, pick up a few at a time just so it's not retarded. And so what what's happening is um, the guy who kind of got this whole ball rolling, a, a guy who's one of my heroes, his name's Steve Becko, um, he is basically stepping aside for a month, and we're talking about a guy who is clearly addicted to blogging. Um, he's taken this very seriously, and he, you know, there's been a lot of backlash in the well, you know, we 
people who call themselves light workers, the light worker community, the people who believe in ascension, who are working together um, spiritually and mentally with you know their thoughts and their you know imaginations to bring about this great shift that's coming at the end of the year, and they're they're working together to bring it about um, you know in a concerted spiritual effort. And this has kind of been a, you know, there's a lot of hope placed behind these reports that this was going to happen. And then when it looked like it didn't happen, there was a lot of damage done to people's hopes. And hope is what we have to have right now. Hope is what changes what's coming. And so um, these John Lear reports, if they end up being true, it's going to be just, you know, insane and a whole new world for everybody on the planet because then they can't right. deny anymore. Then they can't deny anymore. And if the whole world knows this has all been real, this has all been going on, they've been lying to us about that. They've Oh, they've been lying to us about what's going on on these bases. Well, let's go check it out. And so the world goes and forces them to, to reveal what they've been working on and the technology that they've suppressed and then the world gets that technology for the good of the world, not for military machines and no more freaking wars and, you know, just people. Well, that's, that, so, that's so so that's that BP, exactly what, that, that, that's exactly what, you know, everyone, what, what, what is their uh, business in nowadays? What you and I were talking the other night about the military industrial complex. You know, if if you yeah, had an an hours warning to, against it. Yeah, if you had an avenue to pursue um, you know, technological advancement, where where would you do it? You know, the, well, the hell, the industrial military complex is a very very efficient avenue to get it from concept to, you know, reality to production, you know, et cetera. That that that's going to be a very viable, you know, avenue to pursue your, I, I guess, your investment. You know, and these investments well, And they've, they've got the government course. set up to allow it to happen. Not only do they have, you know, billions that go into each annual budget attributed to just, you know, kind of the whatever black ops program. We don't need to know what it is. This is the money for it. But not only do they get that money, not only do they, you know, get the money from all the drugs that are running around the world, but they also, yeah. the CIA... The CIA is the sole agency that has the ability to just pull money from other federal agencies' budgets and basically not tell anyone what it's for, and then they just send it to whomever they want to and don't ever tell anybody what it's for. And so, you know, we're talking they can pull money from the agriculture budget or, you know, the space program or you yeah. know, anything, the freaking, you know, HUD, you know, housing and urban development. Well, those poor people, screw them. Let's take their money, you know, and, and they can do it, and it, nobody knows how much it is because it's completely hidden, and no, nobody knows that the CIA has that ability. And so right. there's it's just really a ton of money. There's a there's there's an untold amount of money. Not to mention the fake money that the bankers have been, you know, punching into computers, where they just create money out of thin air. Yeah, it's not based on well, anything. That, that, it's that, not that's even real. Of, that's the price of inflation nowadays. Is you know essentially we're printing money. Like it, it grows on trees, and the, you know, to nip it in the bud, I guess. Um, we're, money grows on trees. To the American government, right now, money grows on trees. It's not, you know, we don't have except, that money in, in Fort Knox. The world's back not it taking gold. it anymore. The world's not taking yeah. the dollar anymore, and that's the big story that's well, not in the American media. Is that right. the that world, the other countries right. in the world are actually right. stopping to even take the dollar. They will not take the dollar. They won't accept it. And the dollar so we're becoming joke. increasingly isolated. Yeah, okay, but, okay, that's the problem. We're going to talk about something that's supposedly coming that's going to make, you know, talking about the dollar a moot point. Um, and let's talk about that now. Um, 
there's a an individual by the name of Ben Fulford, and uh, he's living in Japan, has been living in Japan for quite a while. Um, he was actually the East Asia Bureau Chief for Forbes magazine at one point, and uh, basically through his connections in, you know, you know, in Japanese financial world, he got into the Japanese underground and, uh, and you know, stuff that he saw, stuff that he talked about got him in some trouble and he didn't work for Forbes anymore, but he's still there and he's still reporting and he's basically uh, the world's top underground financial reporter because he's got connections out there. Ass. He is protected. Um, Yakuza won't let anybody touch him, and he's basically free to go on the you know the internet. He's got a paid blog, but his blog posts are so well read that people will take him and repost him. You can get the Ben Fulford Weekly on Monday. He puts it out. Um, you can go to BenjaminFulford.net. That's his paid blog. But if you go uh, and do an email subscription to uh, another light worker who posts, reposts Ben's stuff, you can get it for free. And uh, that address is, it's Kawila Pele. Um, and just re, just Google K-A-U-I-L-A, Kawila, like it's, in, it's Hawaiian, and then Pele, P-E-L-A, one word, P-E-L-E, one word. And uh, you'll find Kawila Pele, you can, Subscribe to his stuff and read Ben Fulford's each week. Um, and what Ben does is he gives us the lowdown on what's really been going on in the underground as far as removing these motherfuckers from power on the global scale, and in the same time, at the same time, replacing the global financial structure, like completely dismantling it and issuing a whole new system that basically turns everybody into equals. They've got so much gold. And and Ben's not the only one with insider's testimony on this. There's actually uh, David Wilcock, who is... <clears throat> you'll, you'll hear me talk about David Wilcock a lot. I'm familiar with him. You talk from David Wilcox. I'm familiar with him. And David has just put out a monster post on his website, divinecosmos.com, that details how these guys, who these guys are, you know, how the Freemasonry fits into it, you know, who they are, and how they've gotten us to where we are, and what it is they want to do, and what's going on behind the scenes to stop it, and there's this whole kind of Nasara con concept that's going on. Do you know about um, the urban myth of Nasara? No, enlighten me. Okay, basically it's the this, this, you know, tale that Congress passed this Nasara Act back in like the 80s or 90s or something, and basically, you know, it is supposed to be, you know, a, just a global abundance program for all. Um, and, of course, you know, some people didn't want that to happen, so it didn't. Okay, so these programs that people are talking about are, are kind of like that in that we found uh, all this gold that was stolen from the people of the world and consolidated by, you know, the bad guys, as it were. And, you know, now it's going to be redistributed and and you know the people who had it stolen from them will have it returned and will um basically operate their nations in cooperation for the benefit of all and right now it's basically the US and Europe against the world and we can't win that and we won't win it and when i say we i mean the guys who are the the hoodwinked puppets at the top of our government those servants of the dark ones will not get away with this and it's all coming down, and it's all coming down soon, according to uh, – there's there's been a lawsuit filed. You can actually go and find it um, that is supposed to start this whole thing coming down. It's a real lawsuit, um, and, <laughs> and you can go out there and find it on the government's website. Um, so, uh, you know, between Ben and David and both their ends, they have the 
connections on the inside, and uh, you know they're hearing these things. So it's what's going on on the underground if people are willing to pay attention, because um, it's not coming from just one direction; it's yeah. coming from everywhere. So what we're saying here, basically, is that there's there's a lot of financial discrepancies between you know what we're told is going on and what is actually going on. I mean, there's there, there's um, I don't know. What's a, what's a good way to put this? Bullshit. Yeah, what's bullshit and what? I forgot we could actually curse on this program. Uh, yeah. there, there, there's yeah, bullshit free. and and there's real shit. And the real shit, oftentimes, I, I'm sorry to put this in such layman terms, but the, the real shit you can't even begin to understand. Because I don't even begin to understand it. I mean, it's. I mean, we're we're going off on this whole financial tangent here. Um, getting back to it, you know, uh, there's the Illuminati. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm a firm believer in the Illuminati. I think yeah, they yeah. Do give, have give a them that. Name. I would gladly call them that. Yeah, there, there, there's this stranglehold on what we perceive as the new world order and what they are, you know, when I say they, the, the powers that be, what they are directing us towards, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, what they'd like to have happen. And when, I'm going to explain why that might be um, in a little bit here. Um, but I think we should we should talk more about that. I think you're on a on a roll here because you know people don't realize just how far from reality the lies that we lead are because <laughs> there's so much that's been withheld from us in the way of truth about our history, um, what we really know about how matter works and how energy works and, 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 you know, the truth I'm, behind I'm, physics. I'm glad you're getting back into the, the physical reality of our existence because that's kind of my area of expertise. That's kind of where I was trying to get back into. Um, you, you know, our our whole existence is based on what we perceive. Um, again, Tim, I'm sure you've noticed this. <laughs> you know, by now, but I am an Einstein freak. I will quote Einstein like nobody's business. But um, Einstein, uh, he said, well, reality um, is an illusion, albeit a very persistent one. And what you perceive here as reality is, 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 is it's merely your perception it's merely your feeble mind perceiving what very little, you know, clues and subtleties that you can actually pick up on. And these subtleties, getting back to what you were saying about, um, you know, the guy being picked up, you know, him and, you know, so ever many passengers taking on a 10-day journey. You know, th these guys, you know, while Saturday came and it went, and, you know, they didn't go. That's what we perceive. Is that what they perceive? You know, and, that, and that's an honest question I'm actually raising to, you know, to everyone right now. Is that, is that what actually happened or is that what we perceive as what happened? Well, I know they didn't perceive it happening, <laughs> um, but apparently yeah. some people have. Um, but Steve Beckhouse sure didn't go, and I know he had a friend in Australia, you know, because Australia would have gone first, and they were like, yeah, um, Saturday's going, mate, and uh, I'm still here. <laughs> so, uh, it, it, but I hear what you're saying. Um, and I totally agree, because how do you argue with Albert Einstein? 
But you know. there's many people who have tried. You know, it's it's a hard thing to do. Well, I just I think that I don't know. It's possible that there's a certain level of just basic understanding about the true nature of reality that's necessary before you can get what Al was trying to say. And, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but I think it's definitely possible that 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 might be the case. That, you know, the people who are attacking him either don't want to understand or just haven't quite built up the understanding. You know, a lot of... um, a lot of Eastern schools of thought see um, the road to getting from where you are to where you're going as a series of steps, not you know this, not just this journey. I'm here and then I'm going to journey to you know be this or achieve this, but you see it's a series of steps. You have to put the right foot first, and you put it down, and then you do the next thing, and then you do the next thing, and uh, now I just kind of think. Um, understanding something like what Einstein was trying to really reveal to people there takes a series of steps of understanding before you can really go, oh, uh, oh, yeah, you know what? I, well, I see what he's saying, and I see it everywhere else. You know, you see it in um, the holographic nature of the universe, which, it, you know, there's a book by a guy named Michael Talbot. It's called The Holographic Universe. Read that book. Uh, well, you know, don't read the book if you don't really care about understanding, you know, the, the nature of reality. But if you're into that, then you should check that book out because um, it's not only is it's not real long and it's not real technical and it will blow your mind. And there's nothing you can really do to argue with the fact that science has laid out that this is all really an illusion. And we can change it with yeah. our minds. Okay, let me tell you a story from that Michael Talbot. This is something that he actually witnessed at a uh, when somebody was uh, put under hypnosis, when somebody was hypnotized. Um, he was in a private family home um, researching this hypnotist, and uh, it was a family situation, and basically the father was hypnotized and under hypnosis was given the suggestion that he could not see or hear his daughter. And when they brought him to, he literally could not see or hear her. She would stand right in front of him, giggling, and he did not see it or hear it. At one point, the hypnotist takes a little gold watch with an inscription on the back, holds it in his palm so nobody can see it, and quickly cuffs it on the small of this girl's back, right in front of her dad. And he says, do you see this watch? Uh, Or I don't even know if he said that. Do you see what I have? You know, and yeah, it's a watch. Or do you see this watch? Yes. The guy was like, yes, I see it. Can you read the inscription on it? The guy leans over and reads the inscription. For him, his daughter was not there, but the watch was, and he could read it. But nobody else in that room could because it was cut behind this chick's back. You know, according to Michael Talbot, that really happened. Now, um, there are other stories of people who, in you know, research, were given um, hallucinogens. No, no, it was it was no, it was a hypnosis thing. It was another hypnosis thing, and there were like hypnotized to, um, they basically created their own world together. And so when they were, they would, you know, like co-hypnotize and then go co-create some world together. And it got to be where they spent a lot of time there. And uh, they both saw the same thing and interacted with each other and, and got to be in where they were like just floating heads because they didn't need bodies. And it was, I mean, this is a, these are researchers. This is, you know, like American scientists, and then they ended up stopping the study because they got so weirded out by what they were experiencing. And this is stuff that happened, you know. But it it doesn't fit with what we see as reality, which is, you know, this phone that you're holding 
um, or this computer that you're listening to is real, that it's physically there. And, you know, on one level it is, but, well, like, we were talking about the structure of an atom uh, last Friday and uh, talking yeah. about how if you take the nucleus of an atom and, the, and it's the size of a pea, then the nearest electron is a football field away. And, yeah. you know, extrapolate that to all of physical matter. And, you know, it's basically empty space. It's all an illusion. You know, there's basically empty space in all your cells and all your little molecules. And when you hit something, those empty little spaces hit the empty little spaces. And it's like, what's actually there? Nothing. Not really. It's all just made up. Yeah. The that's, world is nuts. Uh, uh, that's a beautiful way to think of it. Cause but you know what is real from... through all of that? What is real through all of that? Is consciousness. What's that? Those people, their their I am presences. They know who they are. They know that they are, and that doesn't that, change. I, I I think therefore I am. Can't quite remember who I quoted there, but I know it's a quote. And if I can right. argue this, um, you know, this empty space you think of. I know, I know you don't believe in empty space. I mean, what is empty space? That, that that's something that. You know, the human mind can't yet comprehend nor explain. You know? Yeah, it, it, well, it's one see, of the, that's the thing. It's, it, the jump to the reality, this is what I'm talking about. The jump to the reality from here to there, to understanding it, is a large gap for almost everybody. But if you do it in small steps, if you go on the, the search, this, you actually seek out the answers then seek and you will find it's a spiritual truth among many truths that the guy, you know, Jesus laid out for us. And, yeah, I think he was a real dude. I think there's plenty of evidence to show he was a real dude. Do I think that I have to uh, – do I think that he came to save me from hell? No, I do not believe that. I do not believe in hell. I believe that Jesus came to show us um, what we all could be and that he's not the only one who's ever done that. That there's a, the History is riddled with these guys. And, you know, they come and they show us, you know, our potential. From from the Islamic faith, Muhammad taught a lot of the same things. And unfortunately, it's one of the things that, um, you know, the the Christian Western world has yet to fully understand. Not not necessarily understand, but he's yet to even accept as a possibility. Acknowledge that. Yeah, Yeah, there are other individuals throughout the course of history that have offered similar, you know, theories, teachings, um, prophecies, if you will. You know, and and these are true prophecies. Matt, we've got a caller on the line. We're going to bring somebody else in on the conversation. Area code 707, you are on the air. Hello? And they are dropped. Okay. So, so anyway. All right. Well, it, actually, that brings me to a, a, another question of mine. Is it is it possible to have more than one caller on the line at the same time? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've uh, I've opened up the show to the two hour format, which I could we could ask, we could actually do uh, a two hour show every day if really? we wanted to. <laughs> it's really. And it's, um, and we're supposed to be able to do like six callers at once, but why? What show ever needs to do that? Right. And get a little. Uh, I can tell you, this show will never have six people on at the same time. <laughs> so, um, but where well, were we? Uh, well, recently, but you know what? Uh, Mr. David, the Canadian, wants to uh, call in. I think. Well, he's more than welcome to. I thought he was going to bed early. Well, actually, now that I mention it, I look out in his living room while the lights are off. I think he might be doing that. Doesn't he have a big test? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so for our listeners, David Gerard, a.k.a. Canada, our co-host, uh, he's, a, he's a college boy, and he's trying to keep his grades up and work at the same time. He's a He's a real outstanding.
outstanding individual, and so he's doing the right thing tonight, and uh, he's he's going to bed early after hitting some books. Is that hit? Nope, there's 707 again. We're going to try this. Please stay on the line, 707. Ooh, we got another caller. Hello. 707, hey. you're live? Oh. Nope. Okay, we got all kinds of people. I think we got a, a therapist on the line. Oh, there's a therapist. Oh. We got a therapist and a drummer. Uh, yeah. Uh, who else is on the Who else is on the show? Well, we've just we just added two new callers. Um, we've got Matt Lawless, the nicknameless. Uh, we got David, uh, aka Canada, who's just called in, and we've got uh, Monica Boknet, LCMFT, on the line to school us in the ways of psychology and family dynamics. Is this the one and only Monica? It is, it is me. Oh, goodness gracious. Great. <laughs> David is also uh, accompanied by the school teacher, Catherine. Hello. Hello, school teacher, Catherine. Hello, Catherine. Well, it's now a party. Awesome. How you guys yes, doing tonight? Yeah. Doing well, it great. Like a dare to see if we could get six people to call in. I think, yeah. I think we definitely well, have well, a, a pretty good group of diversity here. Yeah, we're uh, we're uh, well, we're all about roughly the same age, but we come from a lot of different walks, and uh, we do a lot of different things. Very but, true. Yeah. It, I, I can understand if David and Monica were confused because they came on at the same time. Yes, I thought it was a girl for a second. <laughs> <laughs> That's so my perception of reality going, David? with you. Yeah. Sorry? Oh. So I was asking you how the studying was going. Monica, have you been listening? Yeah, I've been listening. What do you think about all this crazy nature of reality stuff? Well, I've only I've been in between that and the teenager talking to me, so I haven't had my full attention on it. I only really started paying attention when you guys were talking about Jesus. Uh oh. Why'd that grab your attention? Well, that's when I finally was away from everyone else and alone. Ah. Uh, so, did uh, did you have a comment on what we were talking about, David? Um, you know, it, it, it was quite difficult because, uh, you know, it was, the the delay on the sound is, uh, or sorry, on the radio is uh, probably a good uh, 30 seconds at least. So uh, I was getting a little confused going back in between uh, hearing the phone live and hearing the computer. Uh, I, I'm sure oh, I'll have yeah, you should, a minute. Yeah, if you're going to stay online, you should go ahead and turn your your computer down. Oh, yeah, I mean, I turned it off. Uh, I'll, <clears throat> yeah, I was just uh, I was listening online, and we decided to just uh, call in and hear it live. Cool. Well, I'm going to move the conversation on to um, the another piece of news that I wanted to talk about. Um, just you know, with all the other craziness that we've talked about so far, uh, David and Monica, we talked about uh these this voyage to the stars that at first allegedly didn't happen and then it looked like it maybe it did happen and uh, we talked about Steve Becko and uh him kind of putting himself in exile for a month um you know I don't know whether it's embarrassment um, or if uh you know but I think basically he's just trying to take responsibility for the way it went down um we talked about um, a new currency system being set up for the planet, according to insiders um, from Ben Fulford and David Wilcock. And now I would like to uh, tell everybody about um, some real craziness uh, that's been going on for a couple weeks now. But just the other day, um, Project Canalot is their third multi-hour interview with a guy named Bill Wood, um, whose real name is apparently Bill Brockbrader, uh, who claims to be a former Navy SEAL. Um, and uh, he 
he claims to not only have participated in covert war actions, um, but things like psyops and remote viewing. And really his most important information pertains to technology the elite used, the Illuminati, um, through, you know, their black ops government uh, military types, used uh, this technology to look into the future um, in something called Project Looking Glass, which I've heard about and, you know, has been out there, um, talked about on the underground for a couple of years now. There's also other technology called the Yellow Book or the Yellow Cube that will also allow someone to see the future. But um, basically what happened, according to him, and this guy says he was a member of Navy SEAL Team 9, Navy SEAL Team 9, which, you know, we didn't know Navy SEAL, you know, the Team 6 existed until earlier this year, so, you know, who knows. But uh, what they brought him in to see um, is he could use his psychic talents. Um, you know, they use soldiers for this sort of thing. It, we all know that. You guys have seen Minister Ghost. That's based on a true story, and that's just one story. Anyway, um, they they were going to use his talents to try to discover a probability in the future because, you know, uh, I believe, Monica, you've had experience where you feel like you've actually slipped into another probable reality, right? Are you comfortable talking about that? Well, I, I think that question is irrelevant right now. <laughs> yeah, well, now that I said it, <laughs> um, basically, um, you know, there are probabilities in the future. It's not decided because we haven't really lived it yet. But we build the future through our thoughts, but, you know, there's a collective probability of where we're going. And so they wanted him to see if he could discover a probability that could guide us toward uh, to change what everyone else who used the technology was seeing as an inevitability. In other words... You know, no matter what happened or what choices were made, they all came together at this one point, and they couldn't change it. No matter what they tried, it's like, well, what if we did this? Well, it still ended up the same way. And the way that ended up, what that inevitability is that even he saw is what we're talking about on the show, is you know, this wondrous year, this extraordinary year, this December 21st, 2012, they couldn't change it. And what happened was good for everyone except them because they lose control, they lose power, they are deposed, and the Earth experiences not only a spiritual growth of consciousness, but true abundance and true peace and true eradication of disease and true understanding of our actual heritage, of our actual history, of our relationship to other civilizations who have been waiting for the time to come so that they could be together with us. And that is what's happening this year. That's the inevitability that all these military guys couldn't get away from. But he did find a probability, you know, one probability that might maybe could happen. So they called him Timelines 1 and Timeline 2. But he continues to stress the total unlikelihood of Timeline 2. And what Timeline 2 is, is what you saw on the Super Bowl this Sunday. Timeline 2 <laughs> is the apocalypse. How about Chevy? It's the reigning frogs in a world of Chevys. <laughs> uh, that's what they want to happen. That's why you see all these damn movies where the aliens are going to come and destroy the Earth. They're bad. Be afraid of the aliens. And, you know, the the Earth is going to, you know, stop rotating and there's going to be huge storms and everybody will freeze to death and then they'll burn to death. And, well, or, that, you know, the sun very, will envelop the Earth. That's a very romantic way to um, depict the, you know the coming of days as, as we know it. You know that, that that's that's a way to you know to to bring out the heroes among us. To uh, you know uh, you know what I'm saying. That's uh, that's a very yeah, except it calls it calls to 
strengthen the illusion that we're separate from each other and that we need to fight. Exactly. And that there's something that exactly. we need to fight. That's, yeah. And that's because, a lie. You know, well, that's just not true. Because, well, I mean, I mean, hell, we've, we've been acclimated to that sort of, um, to, to that sort of thinking. Like, um, you know, acclimated. there's something we need to rise through. again. It's, you know, you know the, the part of our culture that we celebrate. And, you know, that's, it, it, it doesn't war. serve us. Can you, think, can you think, can you exactly. think of a period of history where we, you know, can you think of a, since the beginning of, of our country's existence, over 200 years ago, can you think of a 50-year period, you know, just just a mere half a century where we have not had a major war in this country? You know, well, it's, I'm going to go ahead and like guess we, that there's just not one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we reward that kind of thinking. Like there, like there is evil. We need to constantly fight. You know, the the idea of peace in the world is so far fetched that you know we we can't even begin to imagine it. We have to be fighting something. You know, and that's that romantic sort of. Um, you know, heroistic uh, society that we live in to where, you know, we have to be fighting something. And the mil- getting back to what we were talking about, the military-industrial complex is what, you know, our economy nowadays begs on. You know, that's that's what we strive for. And, and it's honestly it's, it's bad think reality. Think of the karma. That, think of the karma, if you believe in the concept of karma. And, and oh, if you I, don't, pretend you do. Okay, if you don't, if you're after listening and you don't believe in karma, just pretend you do. Just bear with me, okay? Imagine a world of karma where there are actual equal and opposite reactions for your own actions. And, um, and think of the karma that's accrued on a national level when you continually just go out into other people's homelands and kick the shit out of them and bomb them and kill their kids and, you know, and work. Man. You know, and May I again quote? Can I can I quote? Do you have an Bible Einstein quote? quote? That would be Einstein. beautiful. Yes. Uh, pride goeth before a fall. You talk about pride and American pride, which don't get me wrong, I'm all for. You know, have have a certain. Uh, you're a Chevy man, I know. But but pride goeth before a fall, and pride is. Um, one of the deadly sins, you know, take it from me, a fundam- I won't say a fundamentalist Christian. I will say a born and raised Irish Catholic. I, I, I was taught the dangers of the seven deadly sins, and one of them was pride. Pride is a dangerous thing, and if you have too much pride, you can go about this this romantic, you know, heroistic attitude to where you think you can police the world. And that's that's a, a supremely dangerous thing to think well, that uh, you have you the man about America to you think you have the answer to the entire existence of mankind. Well, and, and the 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 name of American pride is American exceptionalism. And it's something that Americans yeah. like to pound their yeah. chests yeah. about and pretend that basically what they're saying to themselves, to each other, and to the rest of the world is we are better than others. And that is just not true. We are better. Our stuff works better. You're going to do it our way because it's just better. And, uh, you know, I will you know, say this. I will say arrogant. this. We, throughout the course of, um, well, recent history, i.e. the Industrial Revolution onwards, we have had, you know, exceptional advances in um, infrastructure, technology, et cetera, et cetera. We have had, you know, but I don't think it's because we are predestined to be greater than any other, you know, uh, culture, than any other civilization, I think it's because we worked harder. We did have that passion to um, to grow. But, well, you know, I think we were predestined to be an example to the world, and instead we've been, you know, the the destroyer of the world. 
we've just been the destroyer of freedom everywhere and, and uh, unto our own now. And exactly. that's not what the, the what not the, the it's not even but waking up to that. You know, like going, Okay, I just don't think that uh that the founding fathers would, you know, com- imagine handing over control of the country's money to a group of private banks and <laughs> it basically just create as much money as they want. Um, I, I don't think the Founding Fathers envisioned um, and this this is true. You can go find this out. Last year, 2011, BP made in profit, this is profit, this isn't revenue, this is what they actually kept. They made $3 million an hour in 2011. Who is this? BP. BP, British Petroleum. You know, wow. the Gulf you know, of Mexico. Three million. You know I made an hour. Million. Last year? It wasn't three million. <laughs> <laughs> it was about nine dollars fifty cents. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, they they're doing a much bigger job of fucking up the planet. They should be compensated. Hey, well, hey tell you what. Tell you what, if I start a nuclear war and I do a better job of fucking up the planet, can I get $3 million or whatever an hour? No, you get the cinder that's left, buddy. <laughs> but I got news for you. Good luck starting that nuclear war because uh, okay, there's yeah. another part of this crazy reality that says that we're not alone in the universe and we're not even close to being alone in the universe and that we're, you know, we have friends and that. <laughs> They are talking to us. You just have to know where to listen. Um, and they're not going to let it happen. And, and don't take it from me. Take it from the Air Force officers who are, you know, saying, yeah, um, there were UFOs flying above our facility at the same time that all the nukes went offline. We had, like, a full one-fifth of our nuclear arsenal go offline for, like, two hours last October. And there was a UFO involved, and there are officers that have said so. And that is true. It happened. They're not going to get a nuclear war, and they've told us. Tell me tell me the last time that anybody successfully did anything with a nuke. Uh, Nagasaki. You, you know, they don't let them do it. You mean the last time one was dropped in anger or the last time one was tested? Because last time in anger was Nagasaki, Japan. Right. Um, and, and I understand that India and Pakistan and North Korea have tested nukes in probably the last decade. But they're, they're not going to be allowed to be used against each other. <laughs> There's, it's just not going to happen. Inherent, so we need to stop being so afraid of it. There is an inherent futility in the nuclear arms race, and that is that in, in, in now, in the 21st century, if someone drops a nuke, who else is going to drop a nuke? Everyone else with a nuke. Right? Yeah, well, well not exactly. But imagine I mean, that you're, you're the guy on the button. Imagine you're the guy with the button, and you know that the folks in the rafters aren't going to let you drop that nuke for real, but you're still going around telling people that you can. Why do you think you're doing that? You're doing that for control. You're doing that so you can make the population that doesn't know any better afraid so that you can get them to do what you want. Okay, hey, you, you're going to be my enemy. We're going to threaten each other with this stuff. And then our both our people are going to do this for us because they're afraid and they need yeah. us to protect them from nothing. And the whole idea of us collectively believing we need them to save us from something doesn't help. It doesn't help us. And we need to stop because we don't need wars. We don't need to choose wars. We don't need to choose to need to be protected from something. What we need to do is stop going to fucking other up. up 
fucking people up. We, we need to stop doing that. Post haste. Just stop. Forever. And if we if can may, make that example, then others can. Again, I know you're getting tired of it. I know you're sick of hearing me quote I'm not. I'm not. Einstein. You are Albert Einstein in this conversation. <laughs> Einstein, Einstein, whoa, drop my phone. Sorry, hold on. Einstein said, heroism on command is senseless violence. All the loathsome nonsense that goes by the name of patriotism, how passionately I hate them. That's, uh, that, that illustrates just... It doesn't serve us. It doesn't serve us. It, it makes us think that we are other than the other guy. And we're not. We're all connected. We're all living on this rock together. We're all breathing the same air. We're all drinking the same water. You know... <laughs> Everything we do affects everyone else, and Hold on, when we make someone else's life better. I muted that entire time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What? I, I, I dropped my phone and I was muted that entire time. I'm sorry. Oh, did I quote Einstein? Did you hear it? Or what? Yeah. No. 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 You did. You did. Okay. You did. You. Um. And basically, I was agreeing hey. with him. <laughs> yes. Well, basically what I'm saying is you've got, again, I hate to dog on a culture, and I know, in especially in the Midwest, it's a culture right now, that there's all these fucking drunk-ass, like, Bible-thumping, hillbilly, boot-scooting rednecks, forgive my, you know, expressionism, but... Well, yeah, we all see it. Yeah, yeah. There's all these dudes that, well, you know, I, yeah, I hate the rest of the world because they're not, I, I don't mean to call them racist per se, but, you know, there's all these boot scooting rednecks that say, well, I hate, you know, those folks overseas because they're brown and they don't worship the same God as me and, you know, let's nuke the fuck out of them. Well, no, that's that's exactly the kind of, imperialistic, you know, intrinsical, paternalistic fucking attitude that I don't like. That it's it's this idea that you have this manifest destiny that you are entitled to and everyone else in the entire world can go kiss your ass. No. We are all here on the same rock. We all live by the same, you know, laws of physics, the same laws of matter, energy, time, and space, you know, and and th- th- we're all here. We all have the same, same need, world. and we all have the same yeah. value. You you breathe air. You need food. You need sustenance. You need um, it, it, the fact that you actually have a spirituality, that you actually have a higher power, I can, I can empathize with that. I really can. But certain people nowadays, especially in our country, and under the the bullshit cloak of patriotism and individuality, they say, well, you know, these ragheads overseas, they don't, you know, they don't agree with the same thing I agree with. Let's, let's fucking nuke them. What's you know, your that, point, that's Matt? Good. What is my point? My point is... Yeah. I, uh, again, I'm uh, I'm playing the religious card. I know that's that's a sensitive subject. My point is, we're all we're all people of the same energy. We're all we're all here, existent in the same time, space, matter, and energy. And and that reality is a divine reality. <laughs> back me up. Yeah, no, I'm. You, you know, I'm right there with you, and and I think that's what people have to get to. It, it, and and the easiest way I try to do it is to say, you know, that moment when you first wake up, and it just it almost seems like unreal that you're, you know, in this body or whatever. If you can think yeah. about that, think about think about yourself when you're dreaming, and and ask yourself if you don't think you have, if you're just a you know a, a ticking meat sack. And eventually you'll just die and be nothing. 
it just it goes yeah. beyond reason. Okay, first of all, just the, the the existence of the universe, you know, it is. You are. And that just, you think that you really think that just is. And it would seem kind of pointless, just about as pointless as Earth being the only life in the universe. So it's pretty much a, analogous, I would say. So, yeah, to go out, what you said, I, I think yeah. it has to become without question for us. But it's a fair question at the same time. You know, we can't force these, you know, beliefs on anyone. I think that the, the natural road is for people to come to it by themselves, by discovering themselves. Any thoughts on that, uh, therapist woman? <laughs> well, I was just thinking how most people in our society don't really allow themselves to know themselves. That would require vulnerability, and that's what a lot of people hide from. You know, everybody's so obsessed with being right. Everything they do has to be right. Everything they say has to be right. And they forget Absolutely. that they get to be the one to define right, and instead they let everyone else define right for them. And then they get so unaware of that they even have a soul that they become so disconnected that it's hard for them to come back. Yeah, because we're all busy trying to live our McLives. I think it's I think it's because the world throws so many situations at us. They throw so many different questions that that humans just can't take it all in at once. And like like one one of the very great people out there, I like I like to quote Dr. Seuss when he says, "Sometimes the questions are complicated and the answers are simple." People don't want to look for the simple answers because they don't believe they're there. When it's really, the, you know, it's, it's the government bombarding, or whoever it is, you know, bombarding us with all this information, overwhelming us, you know, it, 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 overwhelming the media to overlook the real things that are going on to where we're not thinking about the, the very simple uh, answers to the questions. We're thinking about what they want us to think about. Yeah, because there's an entire cover story to, you know, world politics and world, you know, uh, interaction and money and government and, and you know, and this need and, that and, we have for oil and, what's and the scarcity of food. It's all a cover story, but none of it's true. What's but, yeah, the media tells us the cover story, and so we're all, we grow up with it and accept it, and, you know, it's, that's what Susie down the block believes, and so I'm comfortable. We, we're all agreed. This is how it is. But it's not. But it's not. And I, I think we're, we're, we're moving toward a, a shift in consciousness, and I think that maybe that happens when the collective human experience and, and choice is to accept the fact that there is more and there are other things and we don't need this kindergarten world anymore. We're bigger than this. We're better than this. And this is elementary stuff, you know, this whole, you know, feeding of taking one from one for the other and, you know, the worldwide pyramid scheme. It's uh, it's not working for us. It's not working for almost all of us. And we are just as important as anybody else who is experiencing the abundance that they're stealing from the rest of us. And I think it's time to end that. I think it's time to choose differently, choose not to engage in these wars and help them out, choose not to um, poison ourselves or let them poison us with fluoride in the water and, you know, genetically modified corn and everything. Don't forget the arsenic in our chicken. <laughs> and then there's that. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. And what I what a lot of people don't realize is that fluoride in the water actually destroys your capability to use your pineal gland effectively because it calcifies your pineal gland. And are you guys familiar with the concept of the third eye? 
Yeah. So, okay, well, basically, by the, the only purpose fluoride in the water service is to calcify your pineal gland so you can't use it effectively. It's your third eye. It's your connection. That's where you literally, there are photoreceptors in there. The stuff you see is because you have an eye in the middle of your fucking brain. You want to know where cancer comes from? I know this Everywhere. sounds like bullshit to the to the layman's ears, but on, uh, the, like, how many petrochemical fertilizers and pesticides do they spray on your food that you consume every day? That's running in and the water. Do you, you, you eat the fish? No, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, but how cancer has been around a lot longer than that. Well, how many of can't you? Yeah, no, no, no. The carcinogens. The carcinogens are being pumped in so that you're seeing a okay, higher so prevalence how, how of cancer. How do you explain? Okay. How do you how do you explain that? I can't remember what university did the study, but how do you explain them finding cancer in a 2,000 year old mummy? Mummy. Because there was cancer. Well, I, cancer I is a say, condition that. Yeah, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't say cancer was strictly a product of our, you know, 20th and 21st century you know, technology. I said cancer, you know, as we know it nowadays, yes, is a product of, you know, how many things do they feed us on a daily basis that the USDA is inconclusive on research? You know, how many things nowadays that the, the what do you call it, the, the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, does mm -hmm. not have conclusive evidence that you know uh, on whether it causes cancer. So, so or not. Are, you, are you are you are you saying then that it just increases your chances of cancer? I'm not saying it increases your chances chances, but I am saying that you don't have conclusive evidence that it does not cause cancer. You know, take. And uh, you don't well, have no, no, we have conclusive evidence, evidence that, that a lot of the stuff does. Starts it like benzene. But the benzene that they're pushing into our drinking water through fracking, we know that causes cancer. Mercury, mercury that comes from um, uh, the certain types of light bulbs, uh, mercury that comes from, you know, uh, you're not supposed, I've been told, quote, that you're not supposed to eat more than two cans of tuna each day because uh, it contains, you know, a certain amount of mercury. Yes. That, well, I don't know what the amount is, but it is true that over time yeah, you will build up that heavy metal in your body that they have in theirs. Yeah, but if that's true in fucking tuna, for Christ's sake, what's to say, you know, that's not true with um, asparagus, that they spray fields of asparagus with, you know, petrochemical fertilizers? What's to say that corn... Oh. That they spray, that they fly these planes. How about and they iceberg process. lettuce? Iceberg lettuce has around 180 times, 180 times the fluoride that's acceptable in drinking water. Yeah, from the so stuff that they put on. It. For all you um, tobacco consumers out there, I mean, I'm one of them. I admit. Uh, the, the 110 percent. I admit, I'm a tobacco consumer. You're like, you know, ha, again, I'm not going to quote. You're so many times likely, more times likely to receive cancer from tobacco if it was, um, you know, processed with petrochemical fertilizers than if it was naturally raised. You know, what does that say I, about you, these? Uh, I, I, have to, I have to interject here, uh, being as we're getting down to the last 30 minutes of the show. Uh, I, I kind of I got feel 41. that. Okay, correct. I kind of feel that uh, the cancer is getting off the topic of uh, the, of amazing year 2012. Uh, you're I really you're right. To, uh, I want I want to hear more about the, about the third eye and how uh, and and the drinking water. I mean. Are you saying that we we can we can surpass this if we were to say drink natural spring water? Um, no, no, actually basis? in Wichita. Well, us we here in Wichita, Kansas. Now, not everybody listening may be from Wichita, Kansas, but us here in Wichita, Kansas, we do not fluoridate our water. A lot of places okay. do. They they 
they'll never get it here in Wichita. And I think they've tried um, because it really doesn't serve the you know the the excuse they use is you know for dental health or whatever, but it actually but you know it, it affects, places that do have fluoridation. A lot of times it affects people's teeth in a bad way, like spots and decay, weird stuff, and it calcifies the pineal. But you know what does have fluorine? Your toothpaste. Fluoride, yeah, it does. I know. Oh, well, yeah. You don't fluoride. necessarily have to fluoride. use that. You can't. So is it in bottled water? Well, really what you can do is get a, a, an ionizer, um, a kind of an electro, electrolysis thing for water that will separate it uh, through electricity. Uh, electricity? <laughs> it will electrically mm-hmm. separate water into, um, like, alkaline water and acidic water. And what you should do is drink that pure you know, ionized alkaline water into your body, and that will, you know, cancer any disease, any disease. This is a little-known fact, but it's something that people are going to know soon in the future, I believe, um, is that if you keep your body chemistry pH in the alkaline range of things, it is virtually impossible for any disease to take hold at all. And, you know, you keep your body there, you will become healthy. Vice versa, if you you keep your body acidic, you're going to have problems. And so you can, you know, consume foods that turn your body chemistry alkaline, things like cucumber and um, celery and all kinds of stuff, like good nuts, yams, um, all kinds of great stuff. Are you referring to what? Are you referring to uh, Edgar Cayce's uh, theories or or work right now? No. Um, Funny you should bring Edgar up because his his work on health, Edgar is significant for two reasons. One, his work in health and and helping us understand how the body works and what could be good for it and what couldn't and why, uh, you know, predated our new, our current nutritional understandings by decades, and we're just now coming around to realizing why Edgar Casey was telling us what he was telling us, how it all makes sense, and how right Edgar Casey was. And because Edgar Casey was right as he was on health issues, you know, with people he couldn't have ever met, and actually made such a huge difference, he had like years under his belt in and helping people with health issues before he even started talking about things like Atlantis and uh, the structure of heavens and densities and raw in Egypt and, uh, you know, the life of Jesus, the true, you know, the true life of Jesus and, you know, all those sorts of things that he, he, he gave us so much through the validation that we get through his health readings. So thank you for bringing that up. Because anybody listening, if they don't know about Edgar Casey, that they really owe it to themselves to take a look at the life of that guy and what he what he gave us. Why do you ask? Uh, just, just well, wasn't it Edgar permission. Casey that had the whole alkalizing theory? Didn't he? Isn't that in some of his writing? Not only that, but he would in trance tell people how to create a kind of uh, mechanical device that would circulate their own body's electrical fields and chemistry to to help alkalize them and, and you know pull impurities from the body. They were like a there's some kind of a power cell that he helped you make and then you'd like put your foot in the bath or something. He, and this is stuff that was he had no knowledge of this. The guy had an eighth grade education. He was a Sunday school teacher. He didn't know all these medical things and you know chemical things and electrical things. He went to source and got the information, and it was right all the time. And so that's why you know when that's that's why I believe that channeling can be authentic because there's proof that it has been authentic. Yeah, and I that's mean, why I give I, a I, little I, bit of credence to the idea. Yeah, I, uh, uh, you know, that's why I was bringing it up was, uh, 
just from you know, Edgar Casey, you out. know, um, did not, in reference to 2012, did not see things happening in 2012. He did see things happening in 1998, um, that, and things that did not come to pass. Um, things like Japan sinking into the ocean and the greater part of the eastern seaboard, you know, um, being submerged. Um, but uh, he did – all his predictions while he was alive did come to pass. All his predictions for, near, for like, recent times after his passing also came to pass. It wasn't until as time went on, you know, humanity made enough – different choices to skip the timeline, to actually choose a different probability. And we can do that at any point. And that's what the Edgar, that's another thing the Edgar Casey story teaches us, is that we don't have to have cataclysm. We don't have to have doom and gloom and rapid major pole shifts that, you know, destroy the life on Earth or whatever and send us into another ice age or what have you. Um, that that hasn't come to pass. Um, and what is coming to pass is what we are collectively choosing, whether we realize it or not, because that's how reality is built. Moment by moment, we are choosing the reality around us physically and what is coming at us event-wise. We choose it. And that's why, David, you said earlier something about the world throwing so much at us so fast um, when I think another perspective might be that you're attracting so many experiences so fast um, and you don't realize your own power to slow that down. If you chose to slow it down, you could do it. And the more you believed you could do it, the easier you could do it. Well, Tim, well... Um, if I may, Please. I'd like, you're talking, again, I'd like to get back on subject with, um, uh, our collective power to change, um, reality as we know it. You dig? Yeah. Like, you want to talk about that or uh, you have a question about that? Well, well, not really a question, I have to be honest, but, um... You know, you talk about our our, our power as a, you know a collective to change you know the, the direction of society as we know it, and you know it's it's a perfect example of democracy as we know it, and how democracy is you know a, a great example of how you know the collective you know knowledge and intent of a society can change, you know, the reality of existence. You know, we, we we do, as a democracy, have an opportunity to vote to change the direction. But does our vote really go towards what we think it goes towards nowadays? And I guess that's the question I'm raising is, is does our vote really count nowadays? Well, I, I think you're talking about um, whatever vote you have as an American citizen. Is that correct? Uh, to, I guess if that if that's where you're putting it, I like. I already well, no, know no, the no. Answer. I would be because your vote nowadays, in my opinion, doesn't doesn't really count. Well. Right, but I but I think if we're looking at it from that point of view, and we're looking at it from an egoic point of view, from the point of view of the ego, when the bigger situation is our whole soul choosing things, and you know it might surprise us some of the things that our soul would choose that we don't we aren't conscious is happening. There's a whole gigantic infinite part of each one of us that is involved in the things then the decision-making process of, of what happens in our lives, of what we want to experience, of what we want to pull to ourselves, um, you know, or, or who we want to meet or, um, you know, challenges we want to face. And we, uh, we choose it at a soul level or experience because the whole point of coming into this incarnation 
and purposely forgetting who we really are is to advance toward an end goal. There's a point to it all. And that point is to discover what the point is to it all. It's kind of a circle. But, um, you know, inch by inch, step by step, we get closer. But we can't do it all in one lifetime, especially with the things that we, you know, choose, you know, when we don't know what, who we really are. And when people who know who we really are tell us we're something else. And so I think you have to look at the fact that collectively on a soul level, we're choosing things that we aren't consciously aware of. I mean, if you go into the work of Carl Jung, um, or even to some extent Freud, uh, you, you know, there's a vast awareness of what we're unaware of. And uh, I have my lovely wife, Monica, to thank for just how much I have gotten to understand about the views of Carl Jung um, on personality and on, you know, consciousness, personal consciousness. So thanks, babe. Hey, Tim. Yeah? Tim, this is David. Uh, David and Catherine are going to have to sign out here. Uh, But I just wanted to end with a... uh, a quick, uh, a quick, very short quote that I think we might I think would be a pretty good one, good one for the program show. Uh, okay. <laughs> it, again, it's a Dr. Seuss quote. Uh, he's fabulous, uh, and 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 given uh, the the circumstances of what's going to occur here, uh, he says, "Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened." And I think we can all, I think that uh, puts a smile on your face, you know, it puts, puts a brighter enlightenment to, you know, the whole situation of, of what's to come as opposed to the second, um, second situation. It'll, it'll, uh, maybe give an outlook on the first, put a more positive aspect to it. So again, that's, yeah, because, because why would we choose, why would we choose otherwise? Right. Well, we choose otherwise because, People believe that the first outcome isn't possible, so that's the objective of the show is to change change minds and views. If possible. It really is not the force. It really not is not the force, but to but to inspire change. And consensus argument. So we say good night to all Monica, Matt, Tim, and all other listeners out there, and we good shall good night. We shall. Talk again uh, another day, uh, as long as I pass my exam. Sleep well. All right. And, and then when you learn about Edgar Casey, learn about how he just slept on his books to learn. Uh, I, I don't think you're uh, trying it tomorrow. Yeah, I tried that once, and uh, I now have definite back issues. <laughs> okay. Well, good night, you guys. Nice to talk to you. Thank you. All right. Good night. Enjoy the rest of the show. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye, Catherine. Okay. So, um, Matt, Monica, where were we? Uh, Remind me. Well, you were thanking me. (laughs) I was thanking the wife. Um, you are pretty wonderful, and, and you know, I, I have to say that I'm blessed to have, to, I'm blessed to have somebody who will uh, listen to me talk about this sort of stuff, first of all. Um, for all of you guys who are out there listening, going, what kind of freak is this guy? She actually has to listen to this, and worse, on a daily basis, so um, she's a real trooper. And then she really helps me with her perspective. Uh, she's a superhuman, and I tell people that um, any chance I get because I don't know, I'm just lucky that way. She's not a normal person. She's more patient than a normal person and uh, more accepting and, and more perceptive than a normal person. She's got superpowers of the mind. And so it's led her to – she's using her gifts for good and helping people with their lives. And uh, so – She's one of my heroes. Making me laugh. 
But Matt's one of my heroes, too, because Matt has given me hope that I'm not alone out here. Here's somebody who actually not only, you know, has kind of really come to a lot of the same conclusions, but, you know, who seems to really have the drive to talk it out. And when we get together and we talk about these things, we help the understanding of everyone at some point, you know. That's a good way to put it. That's a real good way to put it. I don't know. I wonder if anyone is actually listening at this point. Is anybody out there you guys want to call in and talk? Feel free. You know what? I, I really am desperate for someone to call in and actually... Let us know that there are more people out there who think the way we do. That would be beautiful. Or, you know, even have somebody call in and and tell us why we're nut jobs, and then maybe we can have a discussion about it and uh, and learn something from each other. Yeah, actually, I'd be I, more I would, I would love that the opportunity to. Do you know, I'd, I'd really like to explain these ideas and, and maybe help people who are new, because I, you know, I think, maybe not tonight, but I think in the near future, there are going to be people searching for answers, and they're going to know they're not going to get them where they've been getting them. And, uh, and that's kind of, uh, you know, I'm hoping that this show is something that can help people, normal people, everyday people, who are suddenly thrust into a world they didn't know exist, and they're looking for answers, and they're looking for someone who speaks their own language, someone who's had similar experiences, um, you know, who shares a culture with them, and who can speak to the things that are happening before their eyes and tell them why they don't need to be afraid. Because stuff's, stuff's going to change. And you know, it's change can, I, soon. can I comment on that? You are more than welcome. Because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the things that I've heard you guys talk about is the different reasons, different ways that we're all being deceived, which I fully, I mean, acknowledge that there is definitely a lot of deception in what we call our reality. And doesn't, doesn't that also, the way that you send that message, doesn't it also kind of provoke a little bit of fear? You know what, that's that's actually a very valid concept, is that... She's good at that. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 hear, you hear all the nonsense that, again, I'm doing it as we speak. I'm, I'm discrediting all the, the I want to say lies that you're fed on, you know, national media, whatnot. You know, I want to say they're lies. I want to, I want to discredit them. But in, in the same sense, you know, who are you to believe me? You know, as a, as a third party source. You know, who are you to believe what I say? No, and that's, that's, and that's, that's just another valid point. Make. Well, I think I'm sorry. Go ahead. One, we can offer up, we can offer up whatever evidence we have. That's one thing we can do, yeah. and then they can, you know, they can search it for themselves, or they can independently, you know, search out the same answers and verify things for themselves or not. Um, but you know, the, the concepts, getting them into the, you know, getting the ideas before the people, getting the concepts in their minds um, is the first step to, you know, them finding out for themselves whether or not they believe it. They yeah, so you know, I think that's that's part of the good that we could do. Um, and Monica's right. You know, if if we're doing it in a way that is promoting fear, then there's a misstep because the bottom line message of anything that we talk about on this show, from my point of view, and, and what I'm going to strive to always end with is the bottom line is the good days are coming. All this bullshit that we're talking about and that that might seem scary, you know, these bad guys, these Illuminati, they're about to become a moot point, and that's hopeful. 
there's a new world coming, and and yeah. that's the point. Right. That's what has to be driven home. That's what has to be believed that, and that, taken that, honestly and accepted. From from a spiritual from a spiritual standpoint, like that's what I pray for. Is a time when these harvester no these sowers of fear. I'm sorry, these sowers of fear. You know, we, we, the harvesters of fear. Well, you know, we being the people who take this information, we interpret it as. You know, you know, Tuesday. You know, I I hope and pray for a day that you know these harvesters, you know, these sowers of fear and propaganda. I know I sound like some fucking, you know. What what does he sound like to you, Area Code Nine Five One? We've we've got a caller, boys and girls. Nine Five One, how are you doing tonight? Oh, good. I just um, was tuning in. I just wanted to see what your show was about. So, kind of fascinated by the topic, where, I guess. Where are you calling from? I'm in San Diego. San Diego. So, well, we're looking at, what, 1011 there? Yeah. Exactly yeah. 1011. Yep. Yeah. Well, do you have any comment on what we're talking about? You know what? I just now tuned in. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> Well, we're kind of hither and yon right now. Um, we've covered a lot of recent news um, of, of things that have been on the underground news wires, as it were, things that are supposedly happening right happening right now, and we've just kind of drifted off into discussing, you know, what, what kind of good we can do with a show like this in, in, in helping people feel hopeful for what's to come this year. How do you feel? What 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 is your vision for 2012? Well, I think people should just try to um, stay positive and 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 just think that I don't know, love will conquer all. Not to uh, I'm not, just to find the good and everything. A lot sometimes people want to just automatically assume the worst, and I don't know, just give them hope as far as um. As far as getting into this, I, I mean, I, I guess what it is, we're trying to um, progress into the, what, the fifth dimension. Is that what it is? Yeah. That, well, that the that is the uh, the, the ascensionist uh, point of view, and that's a point of view that I share, and that I believe is actually going to happen for those who are ready. Those who right. have a sufficient spiritual vibration will, at the end of this year, right. move up. The level up. Yeah, and just maybe give, just um, make people aware of the of that. And the, a lot of people don't even don't even know that exists, or it, they don't even have a clue about any of that. So just maybe give them that information, some knowledge. I think that might help. Well, thank you, thank you for yeah. bringing that up because as that's kind of the whole point of the matter, um, and it's something that I've kind of neglected to even discuss this evening. Uh, that's a that's an excellent point because. I'm with you in that I believe that there's plenty of evidence in ancient traditions that part of this change, that part of what's happening this year is uh, moving us toward an actual, you know, new world, a, a new, a new it's age. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end. It's the new. It's like coming into a new, whole new beginning, beginning of the next. Yeah. That's yep. what it is. Where, right. where we snap into a new density of matter. And we are able to um, do other things, and the rules change, and, uh, and you know, physics for all intents and purposes becomes um, different. Um, just just like actual states of matter that we can, in three dimensions, in our three dimensional reality that we are in, we can already look at states of matter and notice how they shift from one into the other. Um, you know. I, Water doesn't slowly turn into ice. It's water and then it's ice. You know, water doesn't slowly turn into steam. Like you don't have half water, half steam. It, you know, it, when things vaporize, they turn into a vapor automatically, instantly. It's not a slow process. And so, matter, when it changes, it's called quantization of matter. It suddenly shifts into another state of being, and that is what's happening to us 
what's going to be coming to us, I believe, um, at the end of this year, and all of the Earth will shift into a higher vibration that's being, you know, it's a part of a divine process, as Matt said. We, we, we've got the basic ideas that this is a divine reality that we're existing in. The question is, what's the point? And the short term is, we're actually going to be shifting to a new reality, and those who aren't ready for it won't be here anymore. Yeah. Well, I don't know about be here. I mean, that's the part that I'm kind of, like, curious about, of course, um, about being here. You know, I mean, I don't think they're just going to die off. I just think, um, well, eventually I guess they will. Well, uh, not well like when, when, when we die, what happens to us? We don't disappear, but we go yeah. into what Matt and I have had. We, we've had extensive discussions about this, um, and and I believe it's the fourth dimension that you know we go to when we sleep and when we die. Right. And we astral, can flip. The astral, yeah, right. And and the yeah. and the astral levels and all the astral levels are a part of the fourth dimension. And so right. what we're doing is we're we're leveling up one past that into the right. you know the fifth. But yeah. at the same time, we're going from the third density of matter that we're at into a fourth density of matter. Yeah. And it's a higher vibration. Yeah. Yeah, I just think if people are aware of those of that of that possibility, that you know, it'll give them something to work towards. And, and yeah, that's so, a beautiful thing that you said. Well, thank you. So. Yeah, I, like well, I said, I'm, this is the first time I'm t- tuned into your show, and um, I was just curious to see what you guys are talking about. So I'll just stay on. You guys well, just go on the line for a little bit, or 15 more minutes or so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Stick around, please. Do. What's your name? I'm sorry. My name's Donna. Donna, thanks for joining us tonight, and thanks for listening in. Uh, yeah, I yeah, love did. Did you find it through Twitter or through Blog Talk? A blog talk, yeah. I listen to it regularly. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. I learn so much. I love it a lot. Well, and you've kind of done us a service in bringing us back to something that's hopeful, you know, the, you know, what we can do with this show. And what you're doing is tuning into our second full, our second episode, our first full one. Uh-oh. So Uh-oh. we're really well, just yeah. getting off the I'll, ground. Okay. Yeah, great. I love this stuff. Thank you for being on the air. It's very... I like it. I like to learn about this stuff. Always and exactly. That's that's what we want to do is teach, is, is get regular people up to speed on these ideas and answer questions and expose people, regular people, to, to these concepts and hope that, you know, so they know they, they've got a choice and they yep. they can choose a different world. And t- yeah. together it, we can choose a world beyond our imagination. Right. If people don't have the information, this is a great way to get it out there. So I love it. I think it's, I think it's awesome. So well, I you. think we're going to be doing this, but especially as you know, as events progress this year, um, I really think that there's going to be a need for for this sort of a platform to to help people. Um, okay. And so I really hope that that's something we yeah. can do for people. Yeah, me too. Are you gonna, are, are you going to tune in more often? Excuse me? Matt's sweating you. He's sweating you to see if you'll tune in next Wednesday. Okay, sure. I'll put it on my calendar. (laughs) Awesome. Um, Yeah, you know, the way all this started, Donna, was um, I play in a band with with our co-host who just signed off, and uh, he's been wanting to talk about 2012 for the longest time. He's been talking about it for like two years. So we finally got together last month, and uh, Matt is his roommate, and we started having these conversations and just thought, you know, let's share these conversations with the world so that maybe somebody else can be helped. I love that. I love to listen about, you know, what people are thinking and their ideas, you know. I think it's great. Really? Well, you sound like a very awake individual. Oh, I try to, I, you know, I, I try to read, I try to stay up with it. I, mean, I just find it all fascinating, you know, there's so much, you know, there's so much more to life than what we see, you know, it's just, I just love it. 
Are you driving in the car right now? I know I'm driving. I am on my speaker with my friend sitting next to me. I know it, and it's illegal. I shouldn't be doing it. (laughs) No, no, nonsense. I just just thought so. That's all. I know. It's horrible. I know I should. Well, when I called you, I I wasn't driving, but then I started driving. All right. Be safe. Well, well, I don't know. You don't don't have to go. I actually have a question for you, Donna, if you Um, would. Yeah. Um, I was okay. wondering, uh, how how is the mood in San Diego toward, or, or, or how do you perceive the mood to be among people um, in those areas uh, as to, you know, this sort of subject or the, the world at large? You know, do, do you see people waking up? Yeah, you know, there are quite a few, um, you know, the meetup groups. Do you have them where, you, where you're living, you know, meetup groups? Have you heard of such a thing? Really? They're called... So yeah, there's are doing quite, it. yeah, there's quite a few meetup groups on the meta, on metaphysics out here. So yeah, there's you know we, there, there, you know there's, there's you a lot of like people out here. I I think you know, yeah. Where are you where are you calling? I mean, where are you at? <laughs> oh, this is the fun part. We're smack dab in the middle, my friend. <laughs> we are in Wichita, Kansas. Oh wow! Well, yeah. no. <laughs> And so it's a well, little bit it's a different situation here. It's a, we do have people who get together, but I don't know that it's it's not oh, like massively you and informal. Have you, been to San Diego? have you ever been here? No, no, I've never been to San Diego. You have to come. My, yeah. I mean, it's so like casual, laid back. I mean, I live right by the beach. It's you know, it's not like LA. It's 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 a bluff. I think it's the greatest place in the world to live. Honestly. A lot of people say San Diego is the most beautiful town in the world. I think it really is. I'm very fortunate to live here. You know, we have so much to do all around us. We have, you know, L.A., we have Mexico, we have, I mean, just so much to do. Palm Springs, Vegas, not too far, you know, everything. It's it's a wonderful place to live in. Can't beat the weather, that's for sure. Yeah. How about the earthquakes? Oh, you know, (laughs) it happens so fast. We had, I don't even remember the last one, but you know what? It happens like... A couple seconds later, it's over with, you know. So, no big deal. I'd take an earthquake over, uh, you know, those tornadoes or whatever you guys. Hurricanes. I'd take, a, yeah. I'd take an earthquake any day, you know. Cause it yeah. happens. You know what? We, you know? we yeah. had a couple of earthquakes, and if anything was depictive of the, the coming events, then I swear to God, it's an earthquake in Kansas. You know what? Whatever's going to happen has already been predestined anyways, and we can't worry about it. You know, it's going to happen anyways. We can't change it. Well, I don't I don't know that, 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 I, that I agree with that viewpoint. I think really? that, that there's physics that shows us we actually do choose what's yeah. coming together That's true. I guess our thought, and our thoughts as it happens. Environment, too. I, I, do. well, in, I, I agree with you, Tim, but... For the sake of conversation at the moment, like, can you recall in recent in recent memory? Can you recall an earthquake in Kansas? Yes, there have been a couple really? that have not not in Kansas, but that have been felt in Kansas that were just to the south of us in Oklahoma. Well, there was a five point yeah, three. I've read, I've, I've read about them. But I, I myself, yeah, but people being actually the young son of a bitch I that I am, I cannot recall them. I'm, I'm sorry, Donna. What was that? Well, I just think it's I think it's a way you know when all these um, I think it's a way of Mother Nature just trying to get our attention. You know, like wake up. You know, you know. Well, you know uh, the uh, people under what do you people find find as much attention? attention? Mother Nature. Yeah. <laughs> well, planet Earth. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Sir. Go ahead. Yeah. What? What if Find Planet Earth actually had an individual consciousness? What if Planet Earth had a consciousness same as you and me, and was and was able to choose things and and actually take actions? I mean, I know it sounds like yeah, okay. What if monkey flew out of my butt? But you know, what if? Just ask yourself the question: What if Planet Earth is actually conscious? Because oh, what if planet Earth is just made out of consciousness the same as the rest of us? It is. I believe it's true. And, and what if she could make chooses, you know, make choices and actually, you know, she needs to release some pressure here and there. Like, you got to pop your knuckle. She needs That's to true. pop Oklahoma. <laughs> well, 
I agree with both of you. Yeah, but you know, you but <laughs> this isn't to make people afraid of, you know, earthquakes. That that wasn't the whole idea. Um, actually, I was I was curious about uh, San Diego for, um, you know, just the the fact that it's uh, right there on the coast and. Well, I don't the, think we're right on the fault line. People do line. say I it's very beautiful. LA is more like on the on the fault line. So, I mean, I've had them actually wake me up, you know, in the middle of the night and stuff. Um, so, like I said, it happens. It's, it's over in the, so quickly that you know, it's not that big a deal. The only the only problem I could uh, possibly see myself having with San Diego, Donna, is uh, the Chargers. I'm a I'm a diehard Broncos fan, and it would be very hard for me to live in the home of the Chargers. I'd have to say. How is he going to be able to have your sports out there? <laughs> I don't, you know. You know what? I'm Packers all the way. All right, sorry, sorry, we had to go there. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. let's well, best win. I don't think you know. It doesn't matter to me, really. Either way. <laughs> well, my wife on the line here, Monica's a diehard Chiefs fan, so we just got a whole bunch of uh, AFC West haters. But I will definitely tune in next week, but I'm going to have to get going now, but it was fun talking to you. And All I right, will, thank you. I'll, I'll tune in next week, sure. Good to talk to you. Okay. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Well, actually, we have just about four, uh, four minutes left, so... I think uh do you guys have any last words you want to get through? Um Monica, are you even there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> really? You guys well, forget I'm a therapist. I'm a great listener. Yeah. I do know that. <laughs> Matt, I uh, I can't wait until the next opportunity we have to get together when Monica can come and uh, participate. As you can tell, she uh, she can hang with the, the rest of us here. She's well versed and is not afraid to ask questions. Um, no fooling. She feels they need I to be can't asked. Wait. Like, you know what, both y'all, get your asses over here. Come on. <laughs> well. I think we've exhausted it a little bit for tonight with the news and everything. Um, uh, hopefully next well, week we'll have all kinds to talk about. Um, we'll we'll uh, get David back on here a little earlier and, and, and maybe start the show with uh, everybody ready to go. And, uh, and we'll just come swinging out of the gate with – all kinds of crazy news because, you know, it's 2012 and stuff is happening. Between now and our next show, you know, look what we had to talk about for this week. Who knows what will happen. Maybe we'll have video taken from aboard the Neptune of um, Neptune. <laughs> you know, who knows? And maybe we'll, we'll have video of other, you know, friends from the skies. Who knows? Uh, maybe the global economy will have finally been shut down and will be on the way to getting uh, people who actually want to do what's best for the whole planet um, in positions of leadership. Because these are things that are going to have to happen. They're going to have to happen soon. Because there's a lot of stuff that's, that's going to have to happen to, to prepare mankind for ascension, which is the whole point of this show. So... Um, we got 90 seconds. I'm just going to let you know. Tomorrow, as you go about your daily life, I want you to remember that we're poised to see a completely different world in less than a year's time. Remember that we are. There are technologies out there that could eliminate the need for electric companies, the gas companies, the oil companies, the airlines, oncologists. These are things we know about. We could have had this world already, but a handful of very greedy, greedy people have kept these things away from us as part of a plan to keep the good stuff for themselves while using the rest of us as ignorant slaves, constantly kicking the good life up to them and them alone. Imagine the things they know and have that we don't know about. Then remember that these same people are about to be removed, and all these good things will be a part of our lives very soon. Remember that we have friends in the sky above us. Remember that they've always been here. Remember that they want to see us grow up as a civilization and join them as family among the stars. 
Remember, this is about to happen. Remember, tomorrow. We build this world together in each moment with our thoughts and focused emotions. Armed with that knowledge, we know that we can build a better world together. If you find yourself afraid or worried about anything, try to kick those thoughts from your mind. Are you afraid about the economy? Turn it off. Whatever you're worried about, just remember, hope. Focus on hope. Put energy into feeling. The world will get better. It already is. Hold on tight, kids. <laughs>